it be a little damp this morning. And, well, Becky and I were watching the game when Ty left. She says, I'll feed the dogs. I said, let the cows in, too. I think go in a little early. So they'll clean up what's in there. Yeah, there's two young cows in there, and the rest of them were on this side, and the gate was shut. So when this dryness moved in and the wind blew, the gate wasn't hooked, so the gate shut. Guess what? The end feeder still has as much in it as it did last night. So I just opened it, and all that happened was the two that were in there come running out, and they all ran to the barn. And I'm glad that it did not get cold, because that one got left on, and the only time that would have been on yesterday would have been after the gate over there got open. I was leaving last night. Well, apparently she knew something I didn't, because it didn't freeze. We actually warmed up last night. We were like 40 degrees yesterday afternoon, and it was 45 degrees at 7 or 8 o'clock last night. 43 now and it's very wet so I don't know what's going to happen today now because I don't like the fact that the cows really didn't get their dinner and they are conditioned to the point now where they're not going to go back out there and eat it, it means I work around one feeder I guess instead of actually cleaning everything and then maybe just maybe the pig sty that didn't get cleaned off when we were moving manure will get cleaned up. I hate leaving it with that shit on there, especially that stuff, because it's that good cakey stuff. And I actually used to clean this machine off every single night when we were cleaning the barn. Because it's hard on tires, it's hard on everything else. And hey, you know, how many other 1984 skid steers do you see playing the manure all year long? They're in this kind of shape. Original paint, except for the wheels. I can say that for sure. Oh yeah, and the and the back door. Because that had been tweaked and beat up before we got it. And when we did some work on it, we fixed it. And then they gave Dad the wrong paint. Apparently there was a color split. Somewhere around 84. And we got the wrong one. That's all right. So anyway, this is the beginning of the Sunday. It's just a little drippy now, but it was raining pretty good part of the night. I don't even know how much we got. I haven't looked there yet. Look at that nice wet windshield. And that's every bit of 15 feet from the edge of that opening. So, you know, it only rained a little. We gotta get these out of here because once we start pushing shit, I don't want to bury the spreaders. Or get it hung up where we can't get one out because of the pile and you know so i'm not sure where i'm putting this yet i'm going to see if i can weasel it in at the end of the big bale barn we'll find out well she's starting to hose on that thing i ain't told her yet she's gonna need the pressure washer for most of it but i figured i'd show you what i was doing said I was going to do it, and I did it. Oh, look at that. So pretty. So pretty. Two-year-old's lots clean. I just got a bale. I wanted to show you something here, though. Those dark spots, the bottom bale on the front row on that end section in the big bale barn. This is the one that had the grass straw bale up against it. You see where it was against it. Three foot tall bale versus a four foot tall bale, right? See that white? That's white mold. I do not off the top of my head remember the technical name for that particular mold. But what that mold will do to a pregnant cow, yeah, we'll get that fed now. In the generally in the last third of the last trimester of pregnancy that will cause abortions. And I know a lot of you never heard of that 
because I've talked with a few of you, especially back east, that he's never heard of it. But he can take a, a perfectly good pregnant cow like that one right there. And if she eats that at the right time in the third trimester, odds of her having a live calf are diminished greatly. This one here is probably got, yep, there's some white mold on this one too. Generally, where they're together and they're out in the open where the weather can get to them, it'll get dark colored. Usually underneath that layer of dark will be some white mold. We uh, ran into that when we did round bales because we did a pyramid stack and covered them with this clean and, you know, kept them as dry as we could before we had a barn to put them in. And we had quite a few abortions one year. And, you know, one, once they've ate it, there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Um, boomer. Big Boomer cow. She's a great example. We had the two-year-olds out in the neighbors for most of one winter. And then we cleaned up where we were feeding out there. And where the feeder had been, you know, I mean, it's just like silage in there because it got damp and whatever else and started cooking. And that's just like candy. Dad got a phone call from a neighbor. Uh, it was December 23rd. I remember that. Said, um, you got a couple of calves right up along the fence by the road. Um, what? Yeah, Boomer was a two-year-old, so it's been quite a few years ago now. And it happened to be in the middle of a, a pretty good deep freeze we had. I got, you know, kind of looked at them. Both of them were alive when they came out. I mean, it doesn't necessarily kill the fetus. But it makes them come out. Had we had a half a clue... And had we had her in the barn, we might, maybe, maybe, she had twins, by the way, we might have been able to save them. So, you know, it was, uh, I think our high through about a three-week period, and there was like 25 degrees. We were down to 10 or so, or 5, somewhere in there. So I couldn't even do anything with them. So they ended up with a tarp over them, and literally we got the two-year-olds out of there, so the rest of them wouldn't need any of that, any more of it. And we had just had the yearlings out there. And yeah, one stupid yearling, she got in where there was a low spot where the veil had been that everybody else was mowing on, you know. And found her upside down one morning. So then we had that to contend with, too. And the ground was froze down a foot or better, so there wasn't any burying them for a while. As soon as it was fit to do it, though, we uh, got them out from underneath the tarp and laid them to rest proper. So, anyway, look at that. This is already nice and clean. She might get by without using the pressure washer. That'd be alright, too. Since, like, next week, they can't make up their mind. They're either going to be 37... We're 20-some degrees for a low, or we're going to be down in the teens. They don't know. Anyway, that's five minutes of your day wasted, right? But maybe you learned something, I hope. Don't trust white mold on your hay. Yeah, the sun finally came out. I got lucky cleaning. It wasn't raining. The wind wasn't blowing. It just wasn't the nicest out. Then it rained. Look at that, they're trying to get me. And, uh, well, Ty got the skid steer cleaned up. She didn't end up using the pressure washer. Did a pretty good job, so. I must have ran it in enough fresh stuff to get the other loosened up good. Don't flatter me. Damn it. Yeah, not too bad yet. And uh, while I was cleaning barn, what are you gimping for? You stepped on a rock. That's what she's gimping for. 
Um, Tyler and Becky took all that meat that we ground up and got it stuff mixed in with it so it's marinating or whatever you want to call it. It's getting happy anyway. So tomorrow, you know, it might even be the next day. I don't know. I don't mind if it sits there a little longer. Um, but I want it to set 24 hours. So, um, see what tomorrow brings. Maybe get some of it made up tomorrow. I don't know if Becky's just going to do it in the oven or. So I don't know how the the jerky shooter thing is going to work onto the grill and the smoker. I need screens. Then it would work better. Which, I got to get a hold of Tom in the morning and he might have some stainless screen. That'd be good. If he does, I'll get some pieces to lay in the smoker and just use a smoker, right? So, anyway, that's the day. They already made a mess over here. I wish they wouldn't, but, you know, it is what it is. Keeps them out of the muck a little. Hopefully they don't blast through bales and scatter them all over in there. And, yeah, need to find a good day and make a couple phone calls and find some hay and fire that old girl up, too. That, and I got to get some grain since we don't have any more to grind. There's an outfit that makes uh, grass seed and clover seed screenings, pellets, 16% protein. They're pretty decent. They're not as good as the green we feed the calves, but they're pretty good. We used it for probably five years, and we definitely noticed a difference in weight gain. But uh, get a hold of that guy and see about getting a truckload of that stuff. It comes in tote bags. I can get six tote bags on a little truck, or if it's still hooked to the trailer, I don't want to screw around. I don't have a problem taking that either, because where it is, you need them at Forest Grove, and they'll load you there. And uh, not that big a deal, you know. I can get in and out with that without any trouble. I don't care if I only got a little on. But all things that, you know, I need a good day for, too. So anyway, hope y'all had a great Sunday. This is way longer than I was going to go for the video, but oh well, you know. And yeah, I did let the cows in about an hour early. I really don't care because, you know, I know they didn't get enough time in there anyway. I don't know when the gate got shut, but when they were all standing there on the outside of it, went in. And it's hooked over now, so it can't shut. So, thanks for watching, everybody.